In this video, we will be looking at research methods in sociology. You're going to need a pen and paper to make notes, or a document loaded up on a computer to start, start typing into. To understand the main ideas, I'm going to introduce some important concepts. You should make notes on what we're going to cover. Although I may direct you to pause, like this, you can of course press pause whenever you wish and rewind to relevant sections. Press pause now as you add this as your title for this section on paper or on a computer. A-level sociology, year one, research methods, introduction. Research methods is a topic that will appear on your A-level sociology exams, featuring on paper one and paper three. The specification is actually for theory and methods, but we focus on research methods in year one, as you can see here, highlighted in yellow. This is the exam board specification. This is what you need to know. Similarly here, and you'll notice the bullet point highlighted in pink. I've done that because we do much more on this as part of year two theory of methods. Although as part of this introduction, I'm actually gonna discuss this in this video. Indeed, to continue here, you can see the final part of the specification for theory and methods is made up of this content highlighted in pink, and this is what we will cover mostly in year two sociology. So far, for example, within families and households, we have looked at what sociologists have already found out about society. For instance, Edgell told us about decision making. But how do sociologists go about finding these things out in the first place? Sociological methods are the variety of tools or techniques that sociologists use to collect evidence, to describe some aspects of social life, or to discover the causes of some social event, such as the causes of educational underachievement. This topic will examine the various research methods that sociologists have used to collect such evidence, and the practical, ethical and theoretical considerations that underpin their choice of research topic and the particular research methods they choose. We're going to start with one of the trickier parts of research methods. Some of this is going to make more sense later on when we've covered more of the actual methods, but we have to do this part first and look at some of the related terminology. The main research methods in sociologists flow from what we call two different theoretical or methodological approaches to the study of society. So imagine that you are looking at things through a particular lens, or in this case, some, a particular pair of glasses. Or to put it another way, in this example, person A and person B are looking at the same scene or social issue. Let's imagine it's the nighttime economy, say, for example. But they're doing so from a different perspective. Because they're doing that from a different perspective, they're going to use different tools or research methods in this case as part of their analysis of what's going on in society. Our first theoretical perspective is called positivism. The assumptions they have about the nature of society influence how research is conducted. Positivists, our first theoretical perspective, say that when studying society, you should adopt what is known as a scientific approach, hence the picture. Please make a note of this point now. As you can see here, Emil Durkheim pictured is one of the founding fathers of sociology, and this is what he believes society is like. Because of this, he believes that a certain set of techniques or methods are necessary. For Durkheim, Social facts, defined here, are like scientific facts. Therefore, they should be studied in exactly the same way. Hence, positivists use what we refer to as scientific methods. If you wanted to study, say for example, matter, you would use scientific methods. Methods. So too, as a positivist, Durkheim says people act in similar ways. Therefore, we need to use the same research methods. The aim of sociology, according to Durkheim, is to study these social facts. To do that, we need to use appropriate methods.
And this is where we can see further links to science. For positivists, we should use scientific methods, or to put this more simply, for a positivist, we should be using research methods that should be used to generate quantitative data. As stated here, quantitative data is anything that could be expressed in a statistical form or a number form. So that could be something as a percentage or something that could be put into a chart. It could be also something we could talk about as being categorised in some way. So that could be as straightforward as asking people for their opinions on certain things, asking them, say, I don't know, what's their favourite colour, for example, and then putting that into categories. 42% of people at Queen Mary's College say their favourite colour is purple, for example. So positivists prefer methods that generate quantitative data because that's how they view society and that's how they think it should be studied. Such quantitative methods are much more likely to involve large scale research, what we refer to as a macro approach. This means they study large numbers of people. To check your knowledge of this, press pause and complete the following questions, writing your answers down. To start with, number one, define positivism. Remember, you can, if you need to, rewind as necessary. Number two, number three, and number four. Remember to press pause and answer these questions now. Our second theoretical approach is called interpretivism. Note the correct spelling here. Sometimes on some documents it will come up as a spelling error, but this is in fact the correct spelling in sociological terms. Now, for interpretivists, the assumptions they have about the nature of society influence how research is conducted. They're very different to positivists. The good news here is that for research methods, you only really need to know about two perspectives. Positivism, as covered, and now interpretivism, the alternative. The key to understanding the uh, interpreter's perspective really is in the name. Interpretivists focus on how people cannot and should not be studied like plants and rocks, because people are different. People, from this perspective, interpret the world. They interpret events. Therefore, we need different methods to understand why people do the things they do. Because of this, interpretivists adopt and advocate the use of different methods. As stated here, they're not interested in statistics. They want to find out why people do things, but they use different tools to investigate that. So this is our starting point for the alternative to positivism, interpretivism. It's really important, therefore, from this perspective, that the researcher is to use methods that generate what we refer to as qualitative data. Again, note the definition of this term. As stated, qualitative data is concerned with how people think or feel. It might ask them to describe their interpretation of an event, hence the link to interpretivism. When talking about qualitative data, we could talk about reported speech or written words in a descriptive manner, but this also goes as far as to incorporate things such as paintings or pictures. Such qualitative methods are much more likely to involve small-scale research or a micro approach. That means they're more interested in looking at small numbers of people, but in much more depth. Although we're using the microscope analogy here, they're, they're not being scientific. The idea is just to imagine you're looking at something under a microscope. In this case, it's a particular element or portion of society, but you're doing so in lots and lots of detail. So whereas the positivist is a macro approach, the interpretivist adopts what's referred to as a micro approach. They look at things on a much smaller scale, but in much more detail. As we did for positivism, answer these three questions now to check your understanding of interpretivism. Press pause as you answer these three important questions for the basics for interpretivism. In sum, we can compare the two theoretical approaches in this diagram. As discussed previously, 
This will make more sense as we start to look at the specific research methods. But for now, make sure that you can answer the two sets of questions for positivism and interpretivism and note this diagram. When we come to look at research methods, one of the things that you'll be required to do is to talk about why this method will be preferred by a particular perspective, i.e. in this case, positivists or interpretivists. So as a really important starting point, just make sure that you've got some of the basic details for positivism and then interpretivism.